So here's a lady from those courts at Tokotu, beat all the top women players in New Zealand with no formal coaching, and next thing on a plane to Wimbledon, competing and beating most of the world's best, and could have been world famous as Venus and Serena Williams. But in our little nation here, sadly, she hadn't got those accolades. When I was born, my queer uh, named me. Kuruya Mariana. She said that's from the parable of the sower. Everything that's been happening meaningfully in my life has followed that, that journey of, 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 sowing, of sowing the seeds of my talent to the world. No, she was like a ballerina on the court. I, I used to watch her and think, God. She was just a beautiful stroke maker, effortless. Had the best backhand, the best forehand, the best body, best overhead. She had everything. Oh, she was like, she was like the man. She was just a natural, yeah. We were blessed to witness this graceful Māori tennis player. Anybody born in Kotu was born with a racket in their hand and we spent most of our childhood following our parents from marae to marae. There were courts right around the lakes. It was Maori lawn tennis was very strong in those days. Rua came from that volleyboard that was erected in her backyard by her father, pinpointing marks on the board where to hit the ball to. Just whatever her father Waki said was God. I think he saw more in her than what he did. Well, we were, we were just, well, we were just normal. As, but, but he could see her potential, and we couldn't see that. Daddy put me in the juniors, and I said, but "How many matches do I play? Well, you get uh, three, three. If you win, you get to play four. If you can win again, you may get five. And I said, but I want to play, and I, I want to be on the court all day. Never had a clue, you know, really. And that's all I did, was to go from one court to another and play, because I kept winning, you see. Rui dominated all Māori tournaments, and she played straight into Bowl and beat everyone in Auckland, and then, of course, carried on and eventually won six New Zealand singles titles. But New Zealand weren't going to pick her up. No way at all. I don't know what their thinking would have been like, but how this little Māori girl going to fit into our team? That's me there. Um, Anne Malcolm. Now, if her and I had played tennis together, we would have conquered the world. But that is John Waititi, a visionary, a man so humble, he was the one who saw uh, my potential with Dad. He said, this girl has got to go overseas and play. We've got to get her to Wimbledon. And then he found a way of fundraising. Firstly, we'll ask all the Maori bands in New Zealand at that time to come to a concert at the Auckland Town Hall for free. She looked absolutely marvellous. And Mum's kaka, she wore. Mum's kaka, who? Oh. She wore it at the, oh. that night, yeah. And they got the Māori community behind them and they raised that 2,000 odd pounds and in those days enough to send it for two, three, four times. We were so ecstatic about it. Our little girl going all the way to Wimbledon and the first Māori to go and represent her race. It was marvellous. Oh, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I want to, I want to, I want to stay home. I don't want to go away. You've got to go. That's, that's the, where all the best tennis players in the world go and compete against each other in the whole world. 
And of course, the story goes, you know, she arrives at Wimbledon uh, to compete against the best in the world. I remember how beautiful the, the building was because of the ivy, the green ivy hanging over everything. I was fascinated with the grass. Boy, I thought, this is it. This was it. Well, it reminded me of the farm too, but playing on the grass was just heaven. She turned 21 in Wimbledon, remember? Oh, she I went on her own. Yeah, I don't remember that one. Oh. I was well schooled up to just focus on what I want to do and is to get on the court and play. It was normal for me not to take notice of the crowd. They're not going to win the games for you, are they? So here's a lady from those courts at Tokotu. They went on one a junior Māori tennis tournament, one of the tournaments at Government Gardens, into Marae Tennis, came to Auckland, beat all the top players in Auckland, beat all the top women players in New Zealand, competing and beating most of the world's best. It was in the paper that I got into the quarterfinals. I thought it was the round before the, the quarterfinals, but apparently, according to Wimbledon and everybody else, it was the quarterfinals. We did ask her one time, with all your achievements, Aruya, when you're away, were you ever seeded or ranked? Because in those days, they had no computer rankings and no seedings. But she said, I was sort of graded, if you like, in the top 10 in the world. The headlines in the papers in London was, Ruya visualised as one of the world's best only if she would stay on after women and do the circuits. But she wanted, uh, wanted to get home to mummy and daddy and queer. Her whakama, you know, uh, she missed home. And that's what our people are like. When she, once she came home, it was about settling back into our normal Māori community lifestyle. <laughs> this is modern. I don't know how to play with these, but, but it's nice, a nice weight, nice weight. I played a lot of the good, good top players, which is good. And I, I lost. But just to play against them was something really good. Certainly makes you itchy to get going. She definitely put a stamp and put Māori, Māori in general, on the map of world tennis. Everyone knows who she is, and if you don't know who she is, then you mustn't have been around tennis for, for very long. So in our world, she's definitely number one. When New Zealand tennis had its centenary, and they invited her good friend to attend, Fred Perry, famous. He arrived at Wellington and was thankful of the doing. Beautiful setup. He said, oh, where is Aruya Morrison? They were celebrating it and I wasn't invited. But I, I, I never, I, I didn't even know it was on. But that humble lady never questioned it, took it on her shoulders and just moved on. We had to, and not others, acknowledge this lady. It is really sad to know that Auntie Uruia hasn't been recognised within our own country, that, um, that people, like she was a forgotten um, tennis legend. When we think about it, it's quite important that she should be recognised for that. I mean, she deserves to be recognised, and mm. I hope she will be recognised. Maybe we don't put an emphasis on our Māori achievers, which we should do, and acknowledge them more readily in, the, in, in society. And maybe that's our own fault here in New Zealand. We're not doing that and, and be proud of our achievers. And yet when we went to Wimbledon back in 2013, um, a lot of people there just respected her. They just knew who she was and they, you know, she was not forgotten. You know, she was actually remembered over there. But she, she's not worried. She's not phased about it. I think everyone else gets, you know, ones like us, more hurt about it than herself, you know, because um, she just deserves it. But, yeah, who are we to say? You know? What I love about tennis is 
just standing on a court. <laughs> the, just uh, with a ball and a racket. And, uh, uh, yeah, that, that's the greatest thing, I think. As long as I was on the court, the rest followed. <laughs>